Hello guys, this is Dr. Pratibha. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to learn about integumentary system or dermatology. Dermatology, you have to understand first what is dermatology. Derm means it is skin and logy means the study of a particular subject. So the medical study of this skin and its related structures or accessory structures along with related disease conditions and their treatment is called dermatology and physician who specializes in this domain is called dermatologist so the integument is an organ and it is an alternative name for skin so in this integumentary system it includes the skin and its skin derivatives like your hairs nails and glands so the integument is the largest system of the human body and guys mind it here it is largest system of the body only largest organ of the human body is liver okay you have to understand the difference so your integument is the largest system of the body and it comprises 16 percentage of body weight 1.5 to 2 meters square in area and approximately an adult has 22 square feet of skin so the integument is made up of two major parts one is cutaneous membrane and another one is accessory structures your cutaneous membrane it has three layers epidermis it is also called as a superficial epithelium or outermost layer and dermis is the middle layer and hypodermis is the innermost layer these are the three layers under cutaneous membrane and second part accessory structures it is also called as the derivatives of a skin so it includes hairs nails and exocrine glands we have two types of glands in human body one is exocrine gland another one is endocrine gland you have to understand the difference between exocrine and endocrine gland so in this chapter we are going to learn about exocrine gland only exocrine glands needs some ducts to enter the bloodstream so it depending on ducts ducts means minute pathways but your endocrine glands does not require any ducts to enter the bloodstream the secreted endocrine hormones directly enter to the bloodstream so the difference between the exocrine and endocrine in one line you can mind it ductless and with duct now coming to structure of a skin it has three strata strata means layers of a skin here so it has three layers or three strata first one is epidermis or outermost layer or superficial layer and second one is middle layer dermis and third one is subcutaneous tissue or innermost layer hypodermis now coming to epidermis which is the epithelium of a skin and it is the most superficial layer and it is composed of squamous epithelial cells abundantly. The term squamous means it refers to some scale like cells do not contain any blood vessels, nerve cells or connective tissue. And it has keratinocytes also. Keratinocytes means these cells are produced. Keratin, it is a extremely fibrous strong protein. And these are the most abundant cells in the epidermis. There are two types of skin. One is thin skin and another one is thick skin. And guys, we know very well where we have thin skin and thick skin in our body. So your thin skin covers most of the body and it has four layers of keratinocytes. Thick skin covers palms of the hands and soles of the feet only and it has five layers of keratinocytes. The five layers of keratinocytes are stratum carneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum and stratum bezelae or basement membrane. So first one is stratum bezelae. It is attached to basement membrane by hemidesmosomes and also it forms a strong bond between epidermis and dermis middle layer and also it creates epidermal ridges, you know, fingerprints, that one only. And it has a tiny mounds called as dermal papillae. It increases the surface area of basement membrane and also it strengthens the attachment between epidermis and dermis. 
finally it has basal cells or geminative cells also it is also known as stratum geminativum this particular geminativum cells only produce new cells next layer stratum spinosum it is also called as a spiny layer spiny means sticky nature or stick out nature these cells are produced by division of stratum basale and it has 8 to 10 layers of keratinocytes which are bound by desmosomes and these cells continue to divide and increasing the thickness of the epithelium and it contains dendritic cells or also called as the langerhans cells which are active in immune response next layer stratum granulosum it is also called as grainy layer and these granulosum cells producing keratin and keratohyalin these are the two important fibrous protein and keratin you know very well it is a very tough fibrous protein and this particular keratin only makes up your hairs and nails also so keratohyalin these are dense granules and it has cross link keratin fibers also next layer stratum lucidum it is also called as a clear layer this particular layer is the difference between thick skin and thin skin it is present only in thick skin and it covers stratum granulosum also next layer stratum carneum also called as a horn layer so this particular layer is the exposed surface of a skin or a superficial layer and it is purely water resistant and these cells should be shed and replaced by every 2 weeks it means you know your stratum geminativum cells so these cells only produce new cells after synthesis of new cells they just push towards the corneum and in the corneum we have dead cells so these dead cells replaced by synthesized new cells every 2 weeks once epidermis consists of some special cells called as melanocytes you can split the term here melano plus cytes melano means it is black color cytes means producing cells so these particular melanocytes produce a pigment called as melanin this particular pigment only produce color complexion to your skin like black or dark brown and all so the more melanin in the skin it leads darker its color and dark areas like moles it has high concentrations of melanin and what is the uses of melanin means it absorbs ultraviolet rays that's all about epidermis now coming to next layer dermis it is also called as corium or middle layer of the skin so it is located between epidermis and subcutaneous layer or hypodermis so in this particular layer it anchors some epidermal accessory structures or derivatives called as hair follicles and sweat glands or sudoriferous glands and it has two major components one is outer papillary layer another one is deep reticular layer the papillary layer contains areolar tissue smaller capillaries capillaries means minute blood vessels only and lymphatic cells and some sensory neurons so you know guys so while seeing picture you can see blue color and red color blood vessels always in anatomy blue color means deoxygenated blood supply and red color means oxygenated blood supply and it has reticular layer also your reticular layer consists of irregular connective tissue larger blood vessels lymphatic vessels nerve fibers collagen and elastic fibers also so elastic fibers what is the term elastic fiber here so this particular elastic fibers only used to increase your surface area of the skin while gaining weight next layer hypodermis or subcutaneous layer or a deepest layer of the skin so it just lies below the integument and it used to stabilizes the skin and it allows a separate movement also and it contains connective tissues and adipose tissues additionally these adipose tissue contains lipocytes or fat cells these are responsible for manufacturing and storing fat molecules so it connects the skin to the underlying muscle 
muscles and organs also and subcutaneous tissue also contains blood vessels and lymph vessels and nerve fibers mm -hmm.